pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, in the liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Board Member Drake. Here. Board Member Nysel. Board Member Steen. Here. Board Member Van Blarka. Here. Supervisor D. Scafani. Here. Can I get a motion to approve last month's minutes? I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we've been awarded a 50% match matching grant up to $26,500 for three EV charging stations from Ulster County. We're currently working on many other projects, including the town's comprehensive plan. The town is reapplying for a New York Forward Round 3 grant application for Pine Hill, and the application is due October 18th. We aim to finish it by the end of September. Robert and Jan will be coordinating with the application, and we'll have some new volunteers helping in the details. Mark Herbert from Pine Hill and Calandra Cruchank from Big Indian. We are still in some talks with the school administration trying to work out things with possible the county. We have a, a, a small meeting coming up on Friday morning to see if the county can maybe fit in some meeting space, meeting hall space. Um, I don't expect it to really go that far, but I just wanted everybody to know if you're hearing rumors, blah, 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 it's the town doesn't have money or a real initiative to go into the Phoenicia school. Um, it will not be good uh, for an emergency center and that's what we would need to combine it with ambulance and police just to make things more efficient, but that doesn't seem like it can work. Um, Lastly, please share with me a moment of silence in the memory of those who lost their lives on September 11th. Thank you very much. Supervisor's financial report. Zoning fees 400, ambulance fees 19,529 and 26 cents, police fees $30, town, her, town clerk fees, easy pass $192.50, summer rec trips $370, building permit fees $4,117.90, dog licenses five, $55.50, planning board $100, um, cell tower rental and MAHV, the medical arts building, uh, $4,201.96. Justice fees, $6,375. Interest in town accounts, $8,962.03. Vital statistics, $88. Ambulance donations, $250. AWASMP, Reimbursement, $3,248.75. Uh, STR receivables, $5,200. Sale of county cemetery plot, I'm sorry, $185. Sales tax revenues, $65,840.93. Reimbursement from highway, $4,183. AED reimbursements, $3,364.86. Health coverage, $245.68. Reimbursement from Pine Hill Water, wrong account, $220.59. Glenbrook Park, $50 for a total of $127,210.96. Committee reports. I'm sorry, communications, Joyce. Uh, well, Sam was nice enough to put out some flyers of the upcoming events. And as I say every month, they're all listed on our website, which is shandaken.us, and also on our Facebook page. If you hate Facebook, go to our website. If not, just call me up and I'll tell you what's going on. They have a, you're going to mention all your events? Sure. sure. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's it. Um, if you have a dog, it should be licensed in the town of Shandaken. It shouldn't bark for more than 15 minutes at a time. Cannot. And it cannot run free off your property. Right. 
We've had a few incidences, and we have a dog down in Mount Trumper we're trying to catch. It's a pit bull, and he seems okay, but Nancy's on it, and uh, we posted on Facebook about it, so you can text her if you see the dog, and that's it. Speaking of dogs, um, we're in need of an assistant dog control officer. Anybody who's interested, it's going to be paid per diem. Um, basically, when there's a, a call uh, for a loose dog or any kind of violation, Nancy, our dog control officer, is normally called with the police, um, but sometimes Nancy just isn't available. And we'll need to find somebody who's a very kind person and will learn the ropes of the dog kennel and how to control dogs. So y'all gave you the segue? I didn't even plan great, it. That, that was, was a great, great segue. Oh my God. Okay, now let's move <laughs> to committee reports. Uh, we'll start with the ambulance, Kyle. August 2024 report, total calls received 35, mutual aid given five, Olive First Aid Woodstock. Okay. Mutual aid received three, multiple calls in the district. Total reports, 35 reports. Total transports, 18. Total no transport standby or relocation, 17. School is back in session and our kiddos are off for another year of fun and learning. As they actually have buses, as opposed to walking uphill both ways in the freezing cold, the way we used to, be sure to keep your eyes on the road, watch out for children at the bus stops, and never pass a school bus with any flashing lights. Keep an eye out in the Hamlet centers for groups of kids during the afternoon getting off buses en masse. They tend to scatter once their shoes hit the pavement. Just be patient and make sure that the kids are safely off the bus and out of the road before you start driving once again. We're approaching that time of the year when upper respiratory bugs tend to hit us hard. For those of us out there with little petri dishes attending school, it's not a case of it, of if, but when and how many ailments we will contract from our littles. As much as I hate to say this, take one, of, take one of the few good things that we learned from the pandemic and frequently wash hands, utilize hand sanitizers, sanitizers, and promote good hygiene to your loved ones. If you are susceptible to the flu or high risk due to other health issues, the time to schedule your immunizations with your doctor or pharmacist is now, not during the rush time when absolutely everyone is getting sick. Stay safe, Richard Mullally, MTP, Chief of Department, Township Bacon Ambulance Service. Thanks, Kyle. Building zoning, Ellie? Yeah, we had, uh, for the month of August, 23 building permits were issued, three certificates of compliance, three floodplain permits, one stop, work, one stop work order was issued, and one certificate of occupancy was given out. Uh, our fire and safety inspector completed one site visit and 11 inspections. Thanks very much. Police, Kevin. Uh, August monthly report, there was a total of 235 incidents with seven arrests. Wow. Uh, Phoenicia Water, nothing new there. Anything new on Phoenicia Water? Not currently, okay. no. Nothing on Pine Hill Water. Joseph, museum report. The Shandaken Historical Music Museum monthly report for August 2024. On, Saturday, on Sunday, September 1st, the town of Shandaken uh, Historical Museum successfully took part in the Phoenicia Farmers Market to promote the museum to the citizens and visitors of Shandaken. The museum has been nominated for the I Love New York Path Through History program which showcases historically and culturally significant sites and attractions across the state. On August 9th, the museum hosted a public drum circle event given by members of the Big Indian Native American Cultural Center who joined in with lively drumming and singing. On August 11th, a kickoff meeting was held for a proposed new Henry Morton exhibit which included the head archivist from the Stevens Institute and a local historian. The plan is to start applying for grants that would help fund the, an interactive exhibit next year and work with the Stevens Institute to enhance the quality and depth of the exhibition. 
The museum is working with the Brunel Park Sculpture Garden to discuss potential partnering opportunities. The museum is also working with Pine Hills Hotel Wellington to take advantage of new and additional New York State grant opportunities. There were over 40 visitors in July visiting the museum from the West Coast, New York City, New Jersey, and Europe. Many of the museum visitors are regional history buffs going, doing research. They often left donations and grateful messages as they signed the registry. Respectfully submitted, Joseph Preboy. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Sam. Parks and Rec. Um, okay, so our last meeting was held on August 12th at Glenbrook Park, and our next meeting will be held Wednesday, September 25th at Smith Park at 6 p.m. Um, given the limited responses that we've had um, for the Glenbrook Pavilion and bathroom renovations, we I'd like to ask for an extension for another month on the bidding, if that's possible. Um, we discussed the needs for the playground project. We're still waiting to hear back about a crust, uh, the crust funding we applied for in July. Playground project will be showcased as the February business of the month at Ulster Savings Bank in Phoenicia to help spread the word that we're still in need of donations. Um, the Glenbrook Dog Park shade structure has been completed and we wanted to thank all the hardworking volunteers that helped put that together. There was also a new basketball net installed at Glenbrook, so now all of the parks have new basketball nets. Um, thank you to the highway department for that. Uh, the tennis court at Smith Park was seal coated by the Shandaken Shredders and they had their first official skate session a couple weeks ago. Um, there's more seal coating that needs to be done and if anyone wants to help they'll be at Smith Park on Saturday this weekend the 14th from 10 to 3. Uh, our next, at our next meeting uh, we'll discuss parking options, signage and any additional pathways from the park to Main Street Pine Hill so that people don't have to walk or skate on the road. Um, the Smith Park manager, Nick Torres, completed painting the second soccer goal fr frame and installed the second net. So now both are complete and we purchased a line maker and we're hoping that Jeff Bailey will get that done by the end of this month to make an actual soccer field. Uh, the highway department mulched underneath all the swings at Parish Field. It looks really good. Um, we're also looking at purchasing rubber mats to install under the swings. Now that that's complete, we can more easily measure the chains for the swings and make them lower so that kids can actually get on them more easily. Um, Barbara Mansfield on the committee, she's the parish field manager. She donated $1,000 from a board that she's on, Hudson Valley Foundation for Youth Health, uh, to purchase a special needs swing for, for parish field. Um, the American Legion Auxiliary Unit 950 agreed to run these funds through the, their account to then purchase the swing. We thank the auxiliary for, for this since we don't have the fiscal sponsorship um, for those types of donations. Um, also, so I'll mention my events coming up, but also Joyce, thank you for the suggestion of little icon signage at the Phoenicia sign at Bridge Street. Kurt Boyer did create those, so it has ATM, Wi-Fi, yeah. shopping, Looks sleeping, great. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah so that yeah. was really nice. They're reflective so that at night you can still see it. That was your idea? That yes. was. Yeah. That was Many years initially. ago, a few years ago. Yeah, and while. then <laughs> Sophie did kind of remind me of that at one of our um, business association meetings. So thanks to both of so you. So I do like some signs. What is that? I do like some Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Off-site advertising yeah. is bad, you know, yeah, in the Catskills, different. but that's good, helpful sign. Yeah. yeah, it looks nice. Kurt yeah. had made that original Phoenicia sign anyway, so yeah. it was very it's nice. Good. It looks great. That. Yeah. Um, so the things we have going on, we have this weekend on Saturday, September 14th, at the Parish Hall from 9 to 1 is a Red Cross blood drive, uh, co-sponsored by Phoenicia Rotary and the American Legion Post 950. There's information on the... Um, flyer that's up here on how you can schedule your appointment. Um, so you can do that. And then on Tuesday, September 17th at 1 p.m., I'll be doing a fraud prevention and awareness seminar at the Phoenicia Library. Um, all are welcome to join, just discussing some of the fraud and scams that are out there. Um, the Sons of the American Legion Post 950 are having a pig roast dinner on Saturday, September 28th from three, at 3 p.m., 1045 Veterans Way in Phoenicia. Uh, we've decided on a date for Scarecrow Contest and Fall Nisha, which is Saturday, October 19th at Parish Field. 
if we have bad weather like we did last year, uh, we'll set up inside the parish hall. We've already reserved that. Um, then we have the Trunk or Treat and Halloween Parade. That'll be held Saturday, October 26th at 1 p.m. at the Phoenicia Elementary. The parade kicks off at 3 p.m. Uh, Rotary will provide sweet treats at the, finish, at the parish hall to end the parade. And if anyone's interested in participating in either the trunk or treat or the parade, please call Heather Craig or email her. Her, her contact info is on the flyer. I think that's all I got. Sam? Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Sorry, you asked for an extension for... For the bidding on the um, pavilion we are, and bathroom repair. We are That's actually... What I thought you said it. We're, yeah. We're actually going to do that. The state mm -hmm. called uh, or emailed us. Um, we have to put out uh, invitations to certain groups who are MWBE... Minority and women-owned businesses, yeah. and so right. Robert has that. Um, yeah, got and that Robert's yeah. got the list, so we're going to extend it. I'm going to table the motion. I mean, the resolution for right. a month. Okay, I'm going to get a few today. Okay, good. A few more. So yeah, I think okay, it was so. that the fact that we did this, and then people were just busy or tying up loose ends on normal jobs. Yeah. That we didn't really get a lot of people to bid, but I have a few people I'm trying to push yeah. to send their bids in. So if we extend it, that'll be great. Yeah. Uh, anything from CAC? Yeah, okay, they're gonna, um, uh, just, uh, no, no, okay, I mean, we'll they have their meeting, but, uh, you know, they've got events planned, but nothing. Yeah. Right. Uh, nothing from Housing Smart. Anybody yeah. hear anything from Housing Smart, yeah. Sophie? No, no, I don't think so. Uh, and nothing really new from the comp plan. Nope. They'll uh, be attending the PH2 meeting tomorrow. Well, that was the other thing, though. Yeah, PH2 tomorrow is just Jan's not here. At the Pine Hill Community Center. 5 30. 5 30. And uh, Elka and yeah. Kate, Kate, Kate will be there. Yeah. Uh, I talked to them the other day. They're part of the. Um, yeah. Patterns for Progress. progress. The, yeah. yeah. Comp plan stuff. Another bit, but it's okay. Okay, um, public comments on upcoming resolutions or current resolutions. Frank, we're going to open next week. You're going to open next week? Yes. Okay. I, we just had that conversation and next month. Next month, I'm sorry, next month. Yes. Okay. I sent you an email just yeah. a half hour ago. Okay. Yeah, but. Right. Yeah. One thing led to another. We, uh, the state emailed us. We have to invite uh, companies that are MWBE compliant uh, just to make an offer. Okay. So we made a good faith effort to. Okay, because I acknowledge that in there that we would try and. Okay. You're. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you. They're compliant. It'll be in their bid whether they are or not, but nevertheless, regardless, regardless, we, we're we putting it take, off a month. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so no public comments. Uh, a couple of motions. I'm going to. We're going to have a public hearing uh, to do an SDR law uh, um, amendments. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, just to give you an idea, we're going to put language together that would um, not allow people with m multiple <coughs> multifamily dwellings to have STRs and we're also going to uh, uh, make it so that you have to be a resident more than or two years or more to get an STR license. Those are a couple of the tweaks we're going to be doing. I make a motion that we have that public hearing at 6.30 on October 7th, Seven. I believe. 7th, Seven. yeah. Yeah. Do I get a second? October 7th at 6.30? 6.30. Can I be the timer again? 630. I think Ellie seconded. Oh, so. oh yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, 
Uh, and at this point, I may as well make a motion to table resolution 111 for the Second. reasons just spoken. And to, well, or a separate motion to uh, extend the date on the Glenbrook Park RFP to presumably the same October 7th. Second. Exactly. Thanks. It's a good time to mention you probably need to develop, instead of just opening numbers in a meeting and awarding, we need to establish a formal bid leveling process. I know in the past we've had a few bids we've given out to the lowest uh, bidder. I'm going to go back and look that some bidders included options that others did not. So that yeah, we, we won't, weren't really we, awarding we, them to the lowest. Yeah, you don't have to award it that night. We'll just yeah, accept just the bids well, and then you, accept you, you have a meeting a with, the with the highway. Yeah. yeah. Now, some of the ones we do are very straightforward. This one's got a lot of options. Yeah. You can accept it with the option of, you know, even accepting it after, whichever one meets the specifications. Yeah. Well, you could. Well, and this one is likely to be. Well, you could schedule a workshop after and do that, right? Couldn't you? Well, I think ultimately we want to open the bids, but that part of it really should be discussed with the Parks Committee because there's. Yeah, but they got. Special some meeting will have lights, some won't, some will do the balance. And it's, it, it's yeah, written as, as multiple awardee, so some of them are willing to do the entire bit of work. Some of them might only be doing components. So yeah. I don't think realistically we could award it at that meeting. No. I don't we're think it's necessary. Workshop. Yeah, um, but we can open the bids at that date. Yeah. Right. Do we want to schedule a workshop now? I think that's a good idea. Except we possibly need Sam and Babs and a few others. Mm. I think we might want to. Unless, uh, when, when is your next parks meeting? The, so next parks meeting is the 25th of September. So you're one after Well, that would be October. before. Yeah. Well, our next meeting is October 7th, so it would right. certainly be after that. It'd be great if we could do it in that week. Yeah. There's gonna be some anxious bidders if we put it off too much past that. Well, we could probably do it the 8th. I mean, I could do it the 8th or the 9th, but the 8th, I believe, is Tuesday is a pretty open day here. Right, the 9th is the planning. Right. Or the 8th is it's, open. Why don't we just schedule our regular parks meeting for that following Monday, which would be the 14th, and we can do it here. 14th is uh, Indigenous People's Day. Indigenous People's Day. Our class. 15th? I can't do uh, What time? I could do the 15th. Six? Sure. Six yeah, o'clock? So this way, you, this way you'll have a week to look over the bids, too, because I can just That's copy right. them. Yeah. There's right. nothing on digital, so it's going to all be copied. Old paper school. Sorry, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> paper. Nasty, dirty paper. Um. I mean, it, it should be a well special meeting. A it's special going to be a special meeting, meeting. A yeah. Meeting. Yeah, because I mean, we'll you're going to be working to choose the because yeah. we'll need to make some decisions, and it'll be an open meeting, yeah. so we need to advertise it properly. Uh, okay, make a motion that we meet on the fifteenth of October at six o'clock for a special meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Let's move on to uh, resolutions. Resolution 10924, resolution to pay all bills. Whereas the Department of Audit and Control require town boards to sign and inspect all vouchers coming to the town for payment to number and total amounts from each fund. Therefore, be it resolved that the town board authorize the following vouchers paid. General, $275,794.17. Highway, $192,616.34. <coughs> Phoenicia Water, $7,364.75. Pine Hill Water, $3,756.11. Phoenicia Lights, $1,619.11. Chichester Lights are bi-weekly. Pine Hill Lights, $925.29. Heritage, $1,000 and no money from Shandig and Septic for a total of $485,575.77 and move its adoption. Second. 
Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Val Barkham? Yes. Supervisor DiScofani? Yes. Resolution 110-24, adopting the Ulster County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan update. Whereas the town of Shandaken recognizes the threat that natural hazards pose to people and property within the town of Shandaken, and whereas the town of Shandaken has prepared a multi-hazard mitigation plan hereby known as Ulster County 2024 Hazard Mitigation Plan in accordance with the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000, and whereas Ulster County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan update identifies mitigation goals and actions to reduce and eliminate long-term risk to people and properties in Shandaken from the impacts of future hazards and disasters, and whereas adoption of the town of Shandaken demonstrates their commitment to hazard mitigation and achieving the goals outlined in the Ulster County 2024 Hazard Mitigation Plan. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the town of Shandaken, Section 1, in accordance with New York State and local law, the town of Shandaken adopts the Ulster County 2024 Hazard Mitigation Plan. This plan approved by the community may be edited or amended after submission for review, but will not require the community to readopt any further iterations. This only applies to this specific plan. It does not absolve the community from updating the plan in five years. I move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Dave Larkin? Yes. Supervisor Dees <clears throat> Yes. And Resolution 111 is table. Table. Resolution 112-24. Resolution requesting no campaign signage until after Columbus Day, Indigenous People Day, October 14, 2024. Whereas the town of Shandaken recognizes the importance of preserving its natural beauty and viewscapes throughout the town, and whereas Columbus Day weekend is recognized as highly desirable for time for visitors to travel to our area and enjoy the pristine beauty of Shandaken. Therefore, the town of Shandaken town board requests the campaign signs for the general election, regardless of party affiliation or contest, not be displayed until after Columbus Day, Monday, October 14th, 2024. And I move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Blarkham? Yes. Supervisor Discofani? Yes. Resolution 113-24, a resolution for purchase and financing of replacement highway vehicles. Whereas the town of Shandaken Highway Superintendent has identified two vehicles for replacement and unfitting. And whereas the town highway superintendent has identified these vehicles available through a source well contract, 111422, as well as upfitting with dump body plow and wing through the Onondaga bid, as well as available financing for said vehicle costs. And therefore, be it resolved that the town of Shandaken Town Board does hereby authorize the town supervisor to approve the purchase of two 2025 Kenworth T48 trucks 4x4 for a price not to exceed $440,000. Also to approve the purchase and installation of a stainless steel dump body along with the front plow and wing for a price not to exceed $210,000. Be it further resolved that the town supervisor be authorized to enter into agreement with Key Government Finance Incorporated, located at 726 Exchange Street, Suite 900, Buffalo, New York, 14210, for $300,000 for a period not to exceed seven years. And move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Blarkham? Yes. Supervisor DiScopani? Yes. Those trucks are getting crazy, aren't they, Eric? <laughs> well said. Yeah. Incredible. Okay, open public comment. Anyone? Uh, state your name, please. Oh, Howard Wodensky. And you live Mount Trapper? Phoenicia. Phoenicia. Okay. I mean, I know it, but it's got to be told to the public. <laughs> so, I, I have an issue with the current uh, way that you're paying the zoning enforcement officer. If you read your resolution that you made in January, it says uh, ZBO, ZEO with a cap salary based on 20 hours. And $20 an hour with a maximum of 18200 Now, if this is a, uh, an hourly wage, an hourly wage should be paid hourly, not decided that you take the total of eighteen two and divide it by 52 weeks and pay 350 a month. That's the first thing. You don't have any um, timesheet. 
The CEO is also the assessor. So at the, as an assessor, she's self-reporting 35 hours a week. As the CEO, you're paying her 17 and a half hours a week, which now comes to 52 and a half hours a week. You're paying her regular time on the CEO. But in the past, you've had an issue with having to pay overtime because you had people that were on the highway and ambulance committee, on the highway and ambulance, and you ended up having to back pay them for the overtime. How are you gonna, how have you looked into that and how are you gonna deal with that? That's first. And do you have mileage? If you read the, uh, if you read your uh, resolution, it says 18.2 plus mileage. Has she put in for any mileage? She has not. Has she gone out to any site? Not to my knowledge. Okay, so how are you going to, are you going to continue paying her on an hour, on an hour? You're, you're assuming she's working overtime, but Grace claims she is not. Well, hold on. If, if you have her on an hourly wage and she's not reporting hours, correct? Do you know, do you, Peter said that the whole board was involved in this and they, they well, we all passed the, the we all passed the resolution. You passed the resolution. Yeah, all our names. Does the board know that rather than paying an hourly rate, wage, that they decided to assume that it's eight, seven, eight, ten and a half hours a week? Are you, I mean, I, I don't know Just to clear things up a little bit, before I hired Grace as a zoning officer, I called and emailed the Department of State and some other agency, and it was approved that she could do both positions, the assessor and the zoning officer, no. without a conflict there. And maybe we mistakenly put in a, a $20 per hour number within when hiring her for the zoning office but it was it was based it was a base number as approximately so many hours per week but the but the but the cap is the salary to be paid $20 per hour not to exceed $18,200 plus mileage Right. That does not mean to give her eighteen thousand two hundred dollars divided by fifty-two weeks a year. You you said to me yourself, you've been in business thirty-seven years. If you have a dishwasher who's supposed to be there thirty hours, do you pay him by the hour? Or do you pay him? Oh, let's just pay him thirty hours for every week. I have been in that position in yeah. many places, and it. It goes both ways. Sometimes it's paid as a salary, sometimes it's paid, and certainly not a dishwasher is not paid as a salary position. But this is not a salary position. This is well, it's, it's meant to be hours. a salary position. What? It's meant to be a salary it's position. Not. So you Please. want you want us to clock Grace's hours and pay her overtime? Is that the gripe, or is or there redo, something? Or redo the resolution yeah. stating how we pay her as a salary? Yeah. I'm just curious yeah. what the gripe is. What what is the gripe? Are you worried about workers' rights and you want us to pay her the overtime we owe her? It's very simple. If you if you as the board who's on the town board does a resolution that says per hour yeah. you should be getting a time sheet. <laughs> That's first of all. Second of all, and more importantly, let me just get to this point. Do we get timesheets from everyone in town hall? No, not, not, not the elected. Grace. I'm sorry, what? Not, not elected. Grace. Not uh, everybody except Grace no, submits no. a timesheet? Well, well, she's an elected official as an well, assessor. I, but that's but not, that's right. not my yeah. question. No. Um, who do we receive timesheets from that work in town hall in the offices? All the other employees. Anybody who's not an appointed. Or elected. Okay. Elected. Right? So it's the, it's the fact that she's elected so she doesn't submit one. But right. that's, I, that's proper for the elected for position assessment. that's a salary position. Right. It's not proper for a narrow position. So moving forward, I think Howard's right. Grace should track her hours. Complete a time sheet. Yeah. Now, going further with that, 
right? We need or, that she doesn't track or, the assessor's or like, hours. So or we make it a salaried position. Or, or like the water superintendent well, doesn't well, track well, hours. The does. ambulance right. superintendent doesn't track hours. Right. The right. police chief doesn't track hours. Right. We don't, everybody doesn't track hours. Yeah. Rob, Rob had a point. Uh, yeah, we do track the hours for retirement, like so she does retirement. use them there. Mm -hmm. She but puts, it, she puts it in for her assessor way, retirement. She, she but does. the assessor, she actually self-reports seven hours, seven, seven hours per day, 22 days a month, which is a, a normal average in a business. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at 35 hours about per week, right? Now, let's go here. If you're paying, you're supposed to be paying her by the hour, which you're not. How could she possibly make 52 hours and a half hours on weeks that have national holidays? There's no way. This is an hourly job. So, and now I got a letter from Keith, an email from Keith that says the whole board understood this. Did the whole board really understand this? I'm not sure understood what? That, that, that somebody gets paid, that instead of doing an hourly wage, you just take the 18.2, which is the top number, and just divide by 52. Did, was everybody in agreement on that? That was my understanding of what we meant. So, in 2023, like, the resolution that appointed her was $350 per week. And my understanding is that we effectively, as an oversight, included the per hour in this year's resolution, but largely intended to maintain the resolution from 2020. Three, which was three hundred and fifty dollars weekly. Right. That's my expectation, and yeah. as well, far as I'm concerned, what you intend to do or what you did is not the same. We didn't say we intended to do. Howard, Howard, you misspoke. We didn't intend to do something. Robert stated exactly what we did do. Last That's not you said in 2023. Well, it was passed. Yeah. That is true. my expectation. That is certainly my understanding That's of it. Yeah. And I mean, we have. But as, as I spoke, as I stated, it was the understanding of the whole board that was the salary set up. That and was Grace's understanding. And Grace's understanding. And, Grace's well. understanding. Yeah. and we, but that's not what so the problem here that's might not what be. I read in the, in the but the problem here might be, and, and pertains to the overtime, the, that she is reporting the total number of hours worked for the two positions uh, towards the retirement. Whereas in the retirement she lists it as towards assessor, those 35 hours a week include both positions. So for, does she need to say that she's working X under one position and X under another as she reports it for retirement? I would have to talk to retirement about that. Yeah, we would have to look into that. I, I'm not asking about retirement. I'm but that's, saying. but you're, you're bringing up the issue as it pertains to her self-reporting of hours. We are trying to address your concern of her self-reporting right. hours. She's reporting 35 hours as the assessor. Right. And what she's well. doing there, I believe, is combining the hours from the two positions. We'd need to ask her. She's not here. And we'll have to look into with the retirement people to see if she should be reporting it separately or if it's okay for her to be combining them in one report. Yeah. Okay. But the way it looks to me. Well, I understand how it looks to you. The question is what's really happening. And that's what we need to look into since you brought it to our attention. And it's greatly appreciated. Yeah, because as an elected official, she does not have to work 35 hours. No, she does not. See, no. and that's no. probably all the combined. And by the way, she does make many site visits, and she doesn't put in for gas. Yeah. So there's no, there's no mileage, no. yeah. And I don't either. So. Neither. And we do work Neither holidays. Do I. I, can, I can vouch for me, Peter, some of the, you know, the and board, I mean, and yeah, Eric. If if we you, all work if you holidays. If you say you're paying by time, you should have time sheets to vouch. And if you say you're paying mileage, you should have miles to back. If it, if, if, indeed you don't if, if it will, mileage, if it will help you, mileage. Howard, but we can re, mean, we can redo the resolution and not include the, the per hour. Yeah, that's, that's, that was our understanding. Yeah. Yeah. That was the understanding. Yeah. As a town board, sure. I, and I, can't I make a motion. Much, we, but as a town board, you could do a resolution, not follow the resolution. Pass another resolution to cover your ass? I wouldn't say it's going to ask, it's correcting an omission. It's correct, exactly. We, we, before well, we do a new motion, though, let's look into the fact and see how this affects her retirement. Talk to the retirement people and talk to Grace. I mean, if she was working 52 hours a week, I would have seen her here a little bit later at night than I ever have. Um, 
And not for nothing, but we have a meeting scheduled with our auditors in two weeks, and we can Ask, bring yeah. it up with them. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they have already clear it up. And they're already meeting with us to present on what they believe we should yeah. move forward with yeah. to so make our operation speak stronger. To the auditors, this is a speak to Grace and speak to the retirement perfect people question and for find them. out the best way for this to be handled. Perfect. There huh. we go. Perfect. Okay, so now you're saying to me, what you said, you, uh, Howard. Just, just to be clear, this is public comment period. This I isn't, understand. you know, answering all of I Howard's understand. questions. Is there well, some well, specific you resolution that, you are looking for? You just said to me like this. You said that you all work a lot and you work all the time. You all, you all report. And you report it as a town clerk at seven hours a week. The difference, the, the comparison you were making was for people working an hourly position for the ambulance and an hourly position for the highway. Grace... Okay, is yeah. not working an hourly position for the assessor, so she's not a no union member. I, 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 I want to go so we want to go to people who know how to address this situation and ask them what to do. But if you have a self-reporting year, that's but you don't know what she's reporting, as we just explained, and we need to find out. Your what you're saying is we should take your word for it. No, I'm and not saying do that. something. I, I had no so do you want us to find out what's going yes. on? Yes. Okay, so that's what we've said we will do. Is there something else you need? Okay. All right, anyone else with? But there's a... yeah. um, of course. I don't want to delve any deeper into it, but I think what, uh, when we had highway and ambulance employees, the issue, regardless of salary or not, what he's saying is you've got Grace reporting 35 hours a week. She's saying she does assessment for 35 hours a week. It's supposed to be solely for the assessor. It's not supposed to be both jobs. Um, so while she's reporting 35 there, anything, once she hits 40th hour, the checks both come from the same corporation, if you will. That's right. the way it was explained to me. So once they hit the 40th hour, they're to be paid the overtime not at the rate they were getting on a secondary job, but at the overtime to the higher rate job. So that's what we had to calculate back in the day. Highway guys that were working ambulance got additional pay rate based on their highway rate, not the ambulance rate. And that was anything past 40 right. hours. So I think that's what he's getting at. And, yeah, clarify with the people. But, yeah. Right. Um, Which has nothing to do with this. No, I, I'm yeah. something that's yeah. different. Yeah. Uh, Phoenicia Bridge Street Bridge. Um, can we get an update on what's going on there? I know they're moving forward. With we have, I areas. have a safari meeting tomorrow in which I'm supposed to get updated on. Um, they have been trying to put numbers together with SLR and SLR is, has been inundated with work. So. But uh, I'm just curious. What it's still. They're, they still haven't decided, but I believe they're going to do the, the f there, there were like four iterations or ideas of how long were they gonna make it, how high. They ha I don't know if they finally made up. Do you think they well, came to a final decision? I think they're aiming towards the lower one, not the, the long, wide. My question was is that we did a feasibility study yeah. and we had a presentation here and I'm not sure if I got a the word on what position the town was taking on what proposal it was promoting forward for the county to consider. I'd like to know what proposal we're promoting and how we're doing in getting that accomplished or are we just allowing the county to dictate what they're going to do with Bridge Street? We're waiting to hear actually from SLR. At one point, um, Leslie and the people from AWSNP were positing that the, the largest, the longest, the highest was the best was the best idea for the town. Looking in the future, what will be, we be ready for, for more flooding and the like. Um, but we're not engineers, so we're allowing the engineers to decide, okay, for the money, this would be the best idea. And, and we will put our feedback in and say, well, that's too much, we don't want that, and, and scale it back or make it larger. But we haven't given, we haven't even been given. My, my recollection well, from, from the, the, the last safari meeting is that 
they had gone and requested SLR expand, you, you were there, you can correct me, expand, expand the area of their research because it didn't go all the way to uh, Phoenicia School and a little bit further. And so they were gonna come back with numbers. Well, that's another. That show the mapping of the impact of the bridge further upstream for each of those variations. And so I don't think the town can necessarily recommend one of them versus the other until seeing what the impact was further upstream. And so I think there just wasn't sufficient information. Is and what is it? Modeling on the different there is a lot That was of my modeling. understanding. And another wrench in the gears is that the modeling that was done right after Irene actually was undersized for what actually is happening. Um, SLR discovered that many of the numbers going from the Ashokan all the way up to Fox Hollow were lower than actual depths for the 100 year. For up, up to two feet under actual levels. And where did the discrepancy start? At the reservoir? From the reservoir all the way up to Fox and Hollow. And the elevation. In, and the worst part is in Phoenicia, Stony uh, Clove. Before we had the 12 foot waterfall they predicted when they first gave us the maps too. There was supposed to be a 12 foot waterfall so. on Main Street, literally. So. Um, okay, I was just curious because I had heard that the county was moving forward with their plans on the bridge. And I just so. want to know what position we were taking, what size bridge, and what safari was recommending. So if you're still discussing it, then great. It's, yeah, and Yeah, I think we, we should make a recommendation to the county, just I think I mean, there's not enough information I, I, and they're still I doing some research. I would ask you guys bring it forward. I'm sure a lot of people in Phoenicia would like to discuss. Um, I know there's long-term plans and county has made statements at times and maybe not to the best of what people in Phoenicia feel should be done. Um, but uh, I certainly hope to bring it forward to the public. Of course, people like Dennis just want to pull the bridge out. And, uh, I didn't want to say your names, but yeah, yeah. I, I know. Yeah. So, um, some of us would like a bike path. And okay. yes. Does he have a favorite football team? I'm just curious. Yeah, he's a Giants fan. Giants. <laughs> Anybody else? Motion to adjourn. Uh, yeah, motion to adjourn in memory of uh, Blanche Kurt. Second, anyone? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. See you next month.